Okay, today I'm going to show you how I retopolize Mesh from Marvelous Designer into Quads for Second Life. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to um, export out of Marvelous Designer two OBJ files. And the first one you're going to export out, you're going to export the three-dimensional version of your mesh clothing, and you're going to want to use these settings. You do not want Select All to be selected especially if you have um, an avatar that you fitted your mesh clothing to unless you've deleted that avatar and there's only the mesh clothing that you want then you could use select all so you select the mesh clothing over here by putting a check mark next to them you do not want single object selected you do want unified um, UV coordinates you do not want weld you want unweld and I think there's a selection to select um, to export multiple instead of single object. Okay, so you export the three-dimensional version first, and then in Marvelous Designer you look for this symbol. You click on this blue symbol that looks like a T-shirt that's been um, divided into four pieces, and that will flatten out your your mesh your three-dimensional dimensional mesh into flat versions that look just like the UVs and you export that using the same settings as you did the um, the three-dimensional mesh then you import both files in the second life now I I like to export my um, out of marvelous designer into the same scale as second life marvelous designer scale is a lot larger than, than Second Life's scale. That's why the mesh looks so small. Um, and um, what we're going to want to do next is we're going to want to select your mesh and with the channel box open change the scale to 10, 10, and 10. You want to do this because the method that I'm going to be using uses um, uh, blend shapes and wraps and sometimes when the wraps, um, when the blend shape changes the wrap, if the vertices get too close together, they make the 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 shapes go all crazy. Um, um, and so that's why I make it ten times larger. This will fix this will fix about ninety nine percent of the problems of vertices going crazy and shooting off in all directions. Okay, so first thing you want to do, select your flat mesh and you're going to want to duplicate it and then you're going to want to move it center pivot move it to the side now we're going to create a blend shape you select the, the 3D mesh hold down the shift key select the flat mesh in animation go up to deform create a blend shape I'm just going to show you the options that I use I'm pretty sure that there's the default settings and go create then I click the 3D mesh again and you notice this turns pink that means that a blend shape was created and you can also see out here in outputs it says blend shape 1 so I've clicked on the 3D mesh and now I'm going to make it invisible and then I click on the flattened version and in channel box come down here to blend shape 1 you'll have envelope and that this is the name of the mesh and I change this to 1 and you notice that it turned into the 3D shape. If you click on the name and then hold down your middle mouse button, you can go left and right and see that actually changes shape. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to use the duplicates to create the quads. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a curve that follows this edge exactly and a second curve that follows this edge. And the easiest way manually to do it is to go create CV curve tool options make sure you have linear set and uniform set you want to turn snap to points on and you're just going to snap on each point so that you recreate the curve exactly and then you hit enter and these are the control points I know there's 21 control points and there's 20 spans in between the control points and that's going to be important to remember. 
because we're going to create a second curve down here and it has to have the same number of, of spans. So again we go create CV curve tool, snap here and here, hit enter. Now we only have two control points in one span so we need to rebuild it so that it has 20 spans. See it only has one span. So we're going to rebuild it. So we go um, surfaces, edit curves, rebuild curve. You want uniform, you want that set to keep, parameter range, and you want keep ends, and you want linear, and you want to change this to 20. And you can either do it by using a slider or just highlighting it and putting 20. Now the number of spans that you have might be different. So you just click rebuild. And now it has 20 spans. Now we open up our outliner. And here are our two curves. And you notice curve 1 is the first curve we made 20 spans. So and it's the attribute editor. So if you make your first curve and you don't know and you want to find out how many spans there are, just go to the attribute editor and select the curve. Okay, so you select the first curve, hold down your control key, select the second curve. And now we're going to loft. So what in, while you're setting surfaces, come here to surfaces up here, go to loft, and you want to use these settings. Uniform, auto reverse, linear. Section spans can be any number. Uh, we're going to be adjusting that in a minute anyway. Um, partial, polygons, polygons is really important. Um, and control points is really important. And you click loft. And we've just made a quad version of that shape, of the flat shape. But you can see there's not enough spans. So we're going to increase that. Now in the attribute editor you can see that we have loft and you have section spans. And you can change the number of section spans in here. Now it looks like 10 is the maximum, but it's not. You can just highlight it, put any number you want but I actually think 10 looks pretty good. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to move this. So we're going to center pivot, turn off snap to points. And you notice that it's facing the wrong direction. Easy enough to fix. Polygons, normals, reverse. That fixes it. Now we could use this and move it over to here and make a wrap and then use the blend shape to reshape this into the right shape, into the 3D shape. But you want to use a sub subdivide proxy. So what you want to do, you can either click here or you can come up here to proxy and I use these settings which I believe are just the default settings and click smooth and then go move and move the original and this is a subdivision proxy but you can see it has way too many vertices so we're going to change um, some settings so go to your channel box and we go to under inputs poly smooth proxy you want to change the method to linear and linear level to zero now we have an exact duplicate Okay, and you can tell that this is controlling this. Okay, now we want to center our pivot, snap to point, hold down the D key, middle mouse button on a corner, middle mouse button on this corner, and it moves it exactly on top of it. Select both, outliner, both are selected, this is the this, this is the first lofted, this is the, the sub proxy, this is the flat um, two dimensional mesh from Marvelous Designer. You're going to want to hold down your control key and deselect it and reselect it because this has to be the last thing selected. Come over here to animation, deform, and we're going to create a wrap. And here are the options that I use. I like face. You might have something like named volume. And you go create. Now we just created a wrap. If we click on this again, you'll notice that it, it turns pink. 
the subdivision proxy turns pink. And what we can do now, close that out, is come here to blend shapes, and you got the envelope again. Change that to one, and we've just reshaped our quads into the shape of the 3D mesh. And we can come over here to visibility and turn it off. Turn off the original flat 2D flat shape from Marvelous Designer, and there's our quads. Now here's the reason why you did the, the sub proxy. That's the original, and you notice this is still pink. Where, say you wanted to increase the number of spans, so that this is gives you a better um, a better shape. You just you just come down here to loft one, and you change this number of spans. We'll go to 20, and what will happen is we'll put um, it'll put more vertices in in between these um, edge loops. So we're going to change it to 20 and keep real close eye on this right here. See how it's straight? We added 20 spans and you see it still follows, it follows a nice curve because it's going to follow the actual shape. Now had we not, had we not used a proxy and used the original lofted version and came in here and changed the loft to 20, it wouldn't actually change the shape of this mesh at all. It would put um, vertices in um, in here um, and an edge loop in between each one of these, but it would be flat in, be here, in between here and here and here, and you wouldn't actually get any more definition of shape from it. You'd be just adding vertices for no reason. So there's 20. And there's 10. You do the same thing for this one, creating the same thing, and um, as long as you use the same number of spans, they will match up perfectly with these spans. And that's it. Okay, I'm running out of time, so I, I paused the video. I did the same exact steps for the back, for back piece, and now we'll continue on. So, in order to make the shape permanent, you have to select both of the, of the new quad meshes, and you want to duplicate. So I've just duplicated it. You want to snap to grid, hold down the D key, and middle mouse click on the middle of the, on the middle there, uh, middle of the grid, and change this in the channel box to point one, point one, and point one. And now we can go mesh, combine, edit mesh, merge. unshaded. You'll notice this line is a little bit hard. You can just go normals, soften edge. And we just quad, made that into a quad. In my next video I'll show you how to um, do the UVs and to extrude the edges here. There's a, a quick easy way of extruding edges um, to make a really nice fitting mesh.